Colorado Algebra 1 students, we're ready for Section 2 of Chapter 3, Solving Linear Equations by Graphing. So we are continuing our discussion of linear uh, functions. So a linear function, again, is the graph of a straight line. A parent function is when you see the f of x. Don't let f of x intimidate you. It's another word, it's just a label. It's another way of writing y. But f of x equals x is the simplest uh, linear function there is. And we call that the parent function. Okay, well if there's parents, then there must be a family. So a family is a group a family of graphs is a group of graphs that have similar traits, kind of like a normal family. And then you have relatives, and these are called related functions. And related functions, you've simply replaced the y with a zero or with f of x. So here's an example, y equals 2x plus 4. f of x equals 2x plus 4 is writing that equation as a function, where f, you say the word function, and you can replace the f of x with 0. And we're going to show you how to work with those in a minute, but these are all called related functions. Alright, if I ask you to find the root of an equation, I'm asking you to find the solution. And by the way, the power of x, x to any power, like right here, x is understood to the one to the, to the power of one. The power of x tells us how many roots there will be. So when you see uh, x squared, that means there's going to be two roots. X cubed, there'll be three roots. But for linear equations, we're always going to have x. I think I mentioned that yesterday. Uh, x will always be to the power of 1 for linear graphs, for linear functions. Okay, so just know that we will get out of linear and into um, quadratic. But for now, we're just going to take baby steps. All right, the zeros is the point where a line crosses x. That's called its zero, where the line crosses x. To solve by graphing, you have to find the related function. You have to make a table and graph the points and then find the x-intercept. That's how we solve by graphing. There's other ways to solve. Um, but when we're working on graphing, we have to first um, find the related function, solve for zero, okay, make a table, and graph the points, plot the points, and see where did the line cross the x-axis. That's how we'll find the root or the solution. All right, to solve algebraically, big word, algebraically, we solve the equation for x. So two different ways to solve. You can either graph or use your algebra skills to isolate x. Now let's look at this table. Here is a picture of your parent function. f of x equals x. We said that's the simplest um, graph. That's the simplest line. You notice it passes through 0, 0, the origin. It rises and runs exactly 1. So f of x equals 1. It's a line. Its domain are all real numbers, and its range are all real numbers. Let's review that for a second. We talked about that at the beginning of the year. Let's use green. <clears throat> the domain are the x values. We sing the little song, doe a deer, a female deer. We can turn an x into a girl. Range is your y value. So that's the guy. All right, so if you notice, <clears throat> this line's going to keep on going forever, for eternity, for infinity, and it'll pass through all x's, and it'll also it'll have all y's 
as part of its domain and range. So that's why it's um, the parent graph. All right, so here are some examples. We have here y equals 2 thirds x plus 3, 0 equals 2 thirds x plus 3, f of x equals 2 thirds x plus 3. So 2 thirds x plus 3 stayed the same. The only thing that changed was the uh, initial y equals or 0 equals or f of x. So all of these are what we call related. They're related functions. Okay, our first example on the back says to solve an equation with one root. We know it has one root because x has a power of understood 1. So to solve by graphing, I'm going to need to make a chart. So the first thing, I so let's get the equation to equal 0. So to make this a 0, I'll need to subtract 2 from both sides. And then I'll have 0 equals 1 third x plus 1. Now I'm ready to make a chart. And remember, the 0 here could be replaced with the words f of x or y. So you could say y equals or f of x equals 1 third x plus 1. So let's make our chart where we're going to be plugging in values for x. We're going to spit out our range. These are your domain. This is your range. And then in the end, we'll find ordered pairs and we'll be able to graph this equation. So let's look for three, um, just three points. And I'm going to be careful which three I pick. You can pick any three you want, but you don't want to go off the, the graph that's provided there. You'd like to stay around the origin. So let's try zero. And because of this one third and I'm replacing x, let's try three and negative three. That'll keep everything nice and cozy. So I'm going to write it this way. The function is one third x plus one. You need to get used to the one, the um, f of x. So the function of x, so I'm going to replace x with zero. So f of zero is simply one third times zero plus one. Anything times zero, zero plus one is one. So my point there is zero, one. f of three is one third times three, replacing x with three. And a third of three is one, and one plus one is two. So three spits out a two. And then f of negative three, one third of negative three is gonna be a negative one, plus one. Negative one plus one is gonna make zero. So negative three, zero. So now I have three points. I can come over here and plot zero, one, one, two, three, one, two, and negative three, one, two, three, zero. So there are three points. That makes it nice and easy to draw a decent line without a straight edge. Okay. Now how is that related to the parent graph? If you remember the parent graph passed through zero, zero, this one moved up one. It's going to hit the y-axis at a positive one. Well, what is its solution, or what is its root? Where did it pass through the x-axis? At negative 3. Okay. So our solution to this function, after graphing it, I say the solution here is negative 3. All right. Next, they're going to ask us to solve algebraically. So that we don't have to graph this one. We're just going to simply uh, do the math. So we're solving for x. What does x equal? We're going to take our 4 to the left. So we can isolate x, get x by itself. So 2 thirds x, because that cancels, equals a negative 6. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 thirds. And when I divide by a fraction, I must flip and multiply. So x equals the negative 6 that was there. Notice how I'm going to put parentheses around negative 6 because when I flip 
3 over 2, I don't want to forget that I'm multiplying because sometimes that negative sign will make you think you're subtracting. Um, we can simplify before we multiply. 2 goes into 6 three times. If you're not using a calculator, that always makes your math easier to simplify before you multiply. If you didn't and you said negative 18 and you divided by 2, you're still going to end up with a negative 9. So x here is negative 9 and that's how you solve it using algebra. Put a box around your answer. It's always nice, especially when there's a lot of work. It lets us find your answer. Alright, so let's solve this next one algebraically. When we subtract 2x to try to get all our x's to one side, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, we end up with 5 equals 3 and we all know that's not true. And if you're checking to see if you did something wrong and you subtract 3 from both sides, you end up with 0 equals 2 and it's still not true. So the answer to this problem is no solution. If you remember on the first page we said the power of x will tell you how many solutions you have or how many roots. Well, when we excluded our x's, eliminated all of our x's, then we should have known immediately there was going to be no solution. Alright, <clears throat> I want you to check your progress. Try this one by graphing and the next uh, number two by solving algebraically and I'm going to move on to the real world example not real work it's supposed to say real world real world example is to estimate by the graph okay Kendra's class is selling greeting cards to raise money for a new for new soc new soccer equipment they paid $115 for the cards, and they're selling each card for $1.75. The function y equals $1.75 times x, subtracting the initial cost of $115. Now think about that equation. This is what they're charging per card. And if they're trying to figure out how much profit they're making, don't forget your $115 that you invested at the beginning has to be subtracted. And that's going to represent their profit for selling X greeting cards. Find the zero of this function. Describe what this value means in this context. So let's look over here at the graph. All right, so what this graph, well, let's first just review what we have learned in this lesson about solving by graphing. Right here is the zero. This is the solution. Where it passes the x-axis is our solution. So if I'm going to estimate by the graph, I'm going to estimate 65 as our solution. That x needs to equal 65. Now, what does that mean when x equals 65? I think that they're going to break even. They're going to equal zero. The uh, the equation's zero is at 65. Now they wanted to make a profit. So notice the more cards they sell, as the number of cards increase, what happens to their amount of money? Their amount of money is going to increase. So 65-ish, it's an estimate, so let's do a squiggly line, approximately uh, 65 greeting cards is where they will break even. Now I want to check myself. Let's make y a 0, 1.75x equals 115, uh, not equals, excuse me, subtracting 115, that was our initial startup. If I add 115 to both sides, I get 1.75x equals 115, divide by 175, and Looking at my calculator, I get 65.7. So my guess was very close. 65.7. So we would need to round that up because you can't sell 0.7 of a credit of a greeting card. So they need to sell 66 cards to break even. That's just to break even, not even to make a profit. All right, see how that works? You can learn a lot just by looking at the graph, and you'll be using graphs for the rest of your life. And I'm out of time, so I'm going to leave um, number two for you to 
attempt on your own. Don't get intimidated by all the words. Here's what you're solving for. You're going to replace D with zero and solve for T time.